Hello and welcome to Georgie Stripping the Dipping. You are joined by usual co-host AMG Dent and I'm pulled out outside in a black Mercedes Benz. But um, you know, we had Mother's Day that just passed on the weekend and my mom would always used to say to me that wisdom is knowledge and knowledge is power. And in that sense, our guest today is royalty when it comes to such things. And I feel like, you know, if he was one of my teachers back in school, I would have been getting straight A's and A stars. So uh, a huge shout out to him. And ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you to our guest today, Bryson Sullivan, our technical F1 guru. How are you doing today, Bryson? How are you feeling? Um, I'm feeling quite well. Thank you for the the kind words about uh, explaining concepts. I'm I'm by no means the the greatest engineer or or person like that, but I am definitely an enthusiast of this stuff. And if I can help explain some of it, I'm I'm more than happy to do it. Excellent, and that's what we love to see as well, Bryson. Because as as we all know, F1's become a very complicated and technical sport over the years, with the um, the emphasis on sustainable fuels, sustainable energies, move to hybrid, um, different like aerodynamical concepts as well that have been discovered over the years too. Um, just for those who don't know, because like. One, if you don't know who Bryson Sullivan is, I think you've been living underneath a rock. But, you know, for those who don't know, to be fair, like, could you give us a background into what you do and how you got into Formula One? Yeah, I don't, I don't do anything. I talk on the internet <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> um, but no, right now I'm a, I'm a graduate student in aerospace engineering. I'm a PhD student. Um, I've, I've always been um, a fan of Formula One since for, you know, for many years as kind of an informal thing. Um, obviously, it does have a relationship to, you know, the direct engineering side, but I hadn't really been tying those two together so, so much. And then maybe about a year ago or so, um, I started really getting into the Twitter F1 community and communicating more with people who know so much about this subject and are so enthusiastic about it and then learning more and more and more about it and really I've just been totally enthralled by it and one of the things that uh, I can do with some engineering background is just try to give some uh, context the things that other people might be seeing now of course the the caveat to anything is that there are always things that we don't know there are always factors that we don't have you know direct access to but it is important to give some context to things. And so if I can help do that, I, I, I love doing it. Um, I, I really enjoy how technically savvy the F1 community is and also how passionate they are. Uh, sometimes it gets the better, the better of us, but <laughs> that's okay. Absolutely. And I think you touched on some great points there as well, Bryson. I mean, with your background, it's it's no kind of irony there that, you know, a lot of, a lot of what you studied is very transferable to uh, what we see in Formula One. And like you mentioned, too, it's a great community and a hub for technical innovations and teaching each other about the new design philosophies and concepts that have happened as well. And on that kind of note, then, we'll start on the first question, which was uh, pitched by Georgina. We're going to start with the really radical design of Mercedes W13 in relation to its barge boards and side pods. Georgina has done a lot of research. I'm going to give her a big shout out for this, but to basically um, summarize the points that she said here. The, in relation to the barge boards and side pods, it seemed to be an attempt to create outwash and a low down uh, pressure, which would allow uh, efficient airflow from the front to the rear of the car to generate vortices to help seal the underfloor of the car rearward in you know in terms of theories and concepts most people would see this as a winning design philosophy however in reality we've kind of seen the mercedes slightly off where it would normally be um they've been struggling slightly to keep up with the red bull and the ferrari as we've seen so far uh bryson do you, do you believe that there's any correlation with that and the new kind of take on their side pods on um, is there maybe on a, any other explanations you have for their um i wouldn't say lack of performance but why they're not kind of cutting their teeth up front <laughs> to say no it's it's fine to say lack of performance i think i think the the reality is uh, the performance they have in hand right now that they can deliver is certainly not where we would like them to be. It's not where they would like to be. But that doesn't mean 
that we know anything about the performance ceiling of the W13 car. It could actually be, and in fact is expected to be, quite a bit higher than it is currently. One of the reasons why it's so low is because they've had to raise the ride height of the car in order to address this porpoising issue. And you lose something like, you know, 20% of your floor downforce with like eight millimeters of travel. It's a, it's incredibly sensitive and you lose a lot of lap time by, by doing that. So we know there's performance on the table regardless of this particular concept working or, or not. The question is, how does it kind of work, right? And, and what's the general idea? I think just to kind of explain this, you have to take one step back and think of why we have side pods in the first place, <laughs> right? Why do we even have side pods? Why not just, you know, have the regular normal thin body work? And the reason is because the engine generates a tremendous amount of heat and that heat needs to be dissipated and it needs to be dissipated through radiators and intercoolers for the turbocharger and oil coolers and, and things for the uh, hybrid system. Those things need to be packaged in a way that they can perform their job effect effectively, but also not cause a crazy amount of drag for the car, right? Yep. And so the body work around the side pods allows you to do that. It also gives you that, an opportunity to sort of guide airflow to the diffuser, the top of the diffuser and the rear diffuser, and, and now the beam wing, which will ultimately help you improve your downforce. There also is a slight you know, shielding effect that the uh, side pods can give their rear wheels. Maybe let them not have as much drag as they might have otherwise. What's interesting about Mercedes concept is instead of trying to keep the radiators you know kind of close to the side of the side pod their radiators are are recessed into the side pod and sort of sideways and that's actually what's allowing them to make their body work so thin and to have their side pod so thin what that will do is it will improve the quantity of clean airflow making it directly to the back of the car to produce this downforce and make the entire floor potentially work better the question is how is that interacting with the floor sensitivity that results in the porpoising and also there's a question of uh how is it working the front of the floor you mentioned uh, outwash previously and one of the things that the old barge boards were so excellent at is producing a ton of outwash right at the front of the floor sort of extracting flow out of the side of the floor and working the floor that hard in the forward part of it like significantly improves the downforce of it what's interesting is that we don't have the old school barge boards anymore you know these complicated <laughs> beasts these, aer these aerodynamic devices um but we do have a a guide vanes on the front lip of the floor and some of them can definitely be used to produce outwash in fact all of them do but the outermost one actually functions like a barge board the thing is some teams like Ferrari and Red Bull to a degree, and even McLaren are actually using the side pod, the front of the side pod to create outwash in a less efficient way as you would do for the barge boards. Now the thing is with Mercedes's floor and the way that they have their side pod set up, it doesn't necessarily work the front of the floor in the same way that those other designs do it doesn't necessarily produce the same level of outwash there. And in fact, because they're so thin, we no longer can use the side pod to shield